Hi everyone, I'm wearing my glasses today. As you can see, I had one of those dry eye mornings where I was just like, my eyes, this one is like really bugging me and I don't think I can put a contact lens in. So um, you all have to look at me in my spectacles, I'm afraid. Thanks so much for joining me here. My name is Helen, this is the Shrimpy McGee channel. And I am just noticing in my viewfinder that I do not I did not spring for the anti-glare protection, and now they're getting, I'm getting a bit of a reflection off of these, so I apologize for that. Uh, but bear with me, we're gonna talk about lots of good stuff that I hope will be helpful for you today. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoy it, and don't forget to subscribe as well. That lets me know that you like this kind of content, and I will make more of it. So, as you guys may or may not know, I've been using this liquid minoxidil now, so that's liquid generic Rogaine and I purchased this at Target a little while ago now and so I have a little bit more experience using it so today I was just going to put this in my hair and show you how I've been using it and it seems to be working pretty good for me so we will go through that but I also wanted to talk about like what happens if Rogaine is not working for you. It works really well for me but of course, it's not gonna work well for everybody. So how do you know when it's time to stop? What do you do? How do you come to grips with it? This is something that I see a lot of women talk about in sort of hair loss forums that I belong to. And a few people come to me with this question as well. Not too many because I'm sort of known for using Rogaine and having success. So a lot of the questions that I get, and you're of course welcome to leave me a comment here. You're welcome to leave me a comment on my Instagram page that's linked up in the description box. You're welcome to slide into my DMs, which lots of people do, and ask me a direct question, I will be sure to answer you. Um, so lots of people, you know, know me for those kind of Rogaine, so they know me as sort of someone who uses Rogaine and is really open about sharing her experiences and knowledge and what's been working, what's not. So, and less so what happens if it doesn't work, because I think that obviously if people find that it's not working for them, they're not coming to me, they're looking elsewhere for answers, but um, I have garnered some knowledge about that. And even for myself, I just want to be honest, like Rogaine has been great in filling in that bald spot of mine and in filling in this part where I sort of had the most hair loss. And so today I just have my hair, I have not styled it, there's no product in it. I've been following the wavy girl method, but today I decided to give it a break so that I could just show you how I put in the liquid, which will apply to most of your hair, because you have to do it a little bit differently with the wavy girl or curly girl method. And if you want info on that, drop me a comment, maybe I'll make that video next. But I just wanted to show you how I put this in, and I did want to be honest with you to show you guys that yes, so where I do a really great job of putting it in, which would be like right around here, it's pretty good, you know, in my sort of bald spot. Hopefully you're picking up on that. It's been really good at filling in there, but you know, sometimes when I wear different hairstyles, I'm gonna be honest, where I have never focused my concentration that much, it, it's, the fill-in is not as good. How would it be? I have never really concentrated on putting Rogaine in there. So when I wear some other types of hairstyles, and especially when I wear my hair using the wavy method, it sort of clumps together, and I you see a lot more of my scalp. That's what I'm trying to say. So there are places that you do see a lot more of my scalp, like right here. Uh, I'm not in straight sunshine, but if I were under the sunshine right now, you would see, you could see right through to my scalp here, for sure. And also if I part my hair on this side, it seems that I have a bit of a bald spot on this side too. I'm not sure how well it's showing. Again, the light is not the best. So yeah, Rogaine's been great in filling in the areas that I've really concentrated on over the last year, but now I'm finding when I'm styling my hair a little bit differently, and I parted in different ways, and with wearing my hair in a more wavy way where you don't comb through it, you're seeing my scalp in certain places, and you know, I'm kind of actually okay with that. I'm fine with that. It's fine, you know, the Rogaine is doing what it's supposed to do, but um, well, what I came here to show you guys was how I've been applying the liquid. So the liquid differs from the foam, for those of you who have not seen my older video when I did my reaction to the liquid, go ahead and you can watch that too, I'll be sure to link that up. But so we've got the liquid, and what's different about this is, what's great about the foam is that it comes in a, like a mousse can, and so there's no fear of spillage. But I'll be honest with you, when you open this up and you just put it somewhere, it could spill and you could lose all of it. So you have to be ultra careful, which you don't have to do with the foam. But what you do is you just, you know, like if you've given a baby medicine before, you use this eyedropper. Your parents out there will be familiar, I'm sure, with having done that at least one time. So that is one milliliter, which is how much you're supposed to apply, not more than that. So I do follow the instructions. And so I just tip it up until I'm ready to use it. And I set that thing down somewhere safe because you don't want it on top of something because if it falls, it is liquid and it will spill everywhere. 
So more caution is needed. And you know what's different from this to the foam that I've noticed is you have to work much quicker. So this is not the time to, like with the foam, it dissolves kind of slowly. It will run down your face. This stuff will run down your face almost immediately. So what I like to do is I start back here and I'm just putting little drops in and uh, yeah, I'm just dropping it and almost immediately starting to work through it, work it into my scalp. My scalp is quite dry. So on wash days, I use the oil. So where I've been trying to fill in, what this has been great at doing, I find, is really getting in, oh, I lost a drop, is really getting in actually to the sort of more front parts of my hair. So once you put it in though, you gotta rub it in right away. Don't just drop it and then start going over here because what will happen is it will run down your face and you don't want that, right? They're saying don't let that happen because of excess hair growth. And so, um, like I've said before, I'm really not trying to grow hair in the middle of my forehead. I have enough hair, excess facial hair. Actually, that's not true. I don't have too much excess, but I have some. I get some excess facial hair. So I just work this in really good. So, you know, this has been working charm for me. And so I actually have a question that I got and I have permission from the person who was kind enough to leave me the question. I will of course keep it anonymous, but I had someone slide into my DMs and ask me a question. And like I say, it doesn't matter how many of these videos I make, I keep getting new and interesting questions. There is like no lack of questions from people. So now my hair is a right mess, as you can see, and this stuff is oily. It feels oily and you know, it looks oily. I don't know what happens though, but it does, it does go into my hair. And so another hint about using this is make sure your hair is dry. I would not apply this really on damp or wet hair because you want it to enter your scalp. And when your scalp is dry, it will absorb this so much more quicker. It will suck it up like a sponge. But if your scalp is wet or even kind of damp, you know, not so much. Okay, so I've used it all. It's empty now, so I'm gonna put this back. And um, if you'll excuse me a hot second, I will go and wash my hands because I would strongly suggest after you're done rubbing this in really good, getting it into your scalp, that you wash your hands after. It's oil, so you'll wanna use something that is um, gonna break up this, like a strong, I don't wanna say a stronger hand soap, but, uh, you know, sometimes I don't use my, my liquid pump soap. Sometimes I actually have a bar of soap and I use that because it's oily and I don't, I don't wanna grow hair on my fingers. Okay, so I'll be back in a hot sec. Okay, so I'm back and you know, as you can see, my hair's not really styled. I'm not really gonna style it because I just wanted to see, I don't know if the camera's gonna pick up. I hope it does, I'm gonna come close. It's kind of oily, right? So, but that will sink in. That will sink in and go into to my hair. Maybe because my hair is very dry right now. But I wanted to get on to this question that I got on Instagram. Hey Shrimpy, I wanted to say I love your videos. That's so nice. And that you always manage to bring a smile to my face. Thank you so much. I had a question about your switch to the generic liquid Rogaine, if you didn't mind. Let me just tell you, this is, and when I read this, I was like, hmm, that's such a polite way of phrasing it. And it turns out that this question comes from a fellow Canadian. I feel like that is such a Canadian thing, like to ask something in such a gentle manner. <laughs> like we Canadians are not perfect, but we have some nice traits and asking nice questions is definitely one of them. Um, I'm planning on switching from the Rogaine brand foam too, but I heard that you weren't supposed to switch between the foam and liquid. I haven't heard that per se, so that's my answer to that. Um, did you notice any negative effects after you made the switch? How many times a day do you use the generic liquid and how has it been treating you? Thank you so much in advance. Okay, so thank you for this amazing question. I had never heard that you weren't supposed to switch between the foam and the liquid. I had heard some people say that they just didn't like the liquid because it was oily and stuff like that, but, um, and it's probably good that I didn't because I probably would have had some reservations, but I have made the switch and I switched between them. Did I notice any negative effects after I made the switch? Absolutely not. My only thing that I would have to say about the um, liquid, the generic liquid, is that it's oily, as you guys can see, and as I've amply said here, it does leave a residue. It leaves a residue on your fingers, it leaves a residue kind of in your hair, as you can see. And so if your hair is really, already really oily, this might not be the product for you. Maybe you wanna stick to the foam, but it's so inexpensive, it could be worth trying. It might, you know, if your hair is oily, maybe it doesn't make your hair look, and it's already there, maybe you don't look any more oily with it. I don't know. It's such a great price though. For me, it's hard to just justify using just the foam. And my hair, actually, my scalp can benefit from a bit more oil, so it's been treating me really well. How many times a day do you use a generic liquid and how has it been treating you? So yeah, it's been working great. I use it one time a day, 
And so I wanted to make this point about using Rogaine in general. I think I've mentioned it here before. Make sure you use it consistently. You can't get good results unless you use it consistently. For me, I use it one time a day and that's in the morning. And the reason for that is I just don't want to get it on my pillow. I have the time, I have the energy to put it on in the morning. It's just part of my routine. It doesn't take me any longer than two minutes. You know, I took my time putting it in today and the, the oil, the liquid, it's kind of like an oil, the liquid is actually a bit longer to put in, You you but you can disperse it a lot better through your scalp, if that makes sense. The foam for me is a little bit quicker to put in, but like, it's just really quick. I love to do it in the morning and that makes me consistent in doing it. And I never, I don't skip any days. I'm really, really good about putting in a consistently. I just make it part of my sort of my hair slash makeup routine in the morning. And so I don't, I don't ever miss any applications. And so, yeah, so that answers that. So the next thing I want to talk about is, and thank you for those of you who've hung into this point. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is what you do when Rogaine is not working for you. So I just had another look, and I do get this question once in a while, but like I said, not that often. I did have a look in the literature that they give you when you buy, when I bought the generic, it came with a pamphlet. So I just double checked this pamphlet. And it says that basically, for some people, you may need to use this product for at least four months before you see the results. So you see a lot of people giving up at the two month mark, a lot of people saying, I don't see anything, it's been two months, it's been three months. Take it from this paperwork if you want, it says that it will take four months. If you're really not too sure, you know, ask your dermatologist, ask your healthcare pr practitioner, double check your own paperwork that came with your thing and see what it says, but you know, you have to be realistic, it does take time to work. So I see that question a lot. What do you do for sure, for sure it's not working? It's been six months, it's been whatever the amount of time is, and you're just not seeing anything. Well, I kind of have some hard news that maybe you don't want to hear, but I want to be honest with everybody. You know, if you're really unhappy with the way your hair looks and it's just so thin and you see through to the scalp and you're just constantly looking at your bald spot and your balding spots and you're just it's getting to the point where you don't want to spray anymore or add hair fibers, I, I need to be honest with you. At that point, you might want to look into helper hair. And so what is helper hair? That is a hair topper. That is the halo hair that people wear that just is like a big fall of hair that sort of just goes from the back of your hair. Uh, or a wig. And I feel like the people that are the least receptive to this message are women that are kind of around my age. They just think it's like, oh, that's for old ladies or that looks ridiculous. And the people that are the most receptive to this message are women who are like, I'd say between 20 and 30, just from what I'm seeing, you know, I can't speak for every woman in the world, but the women that are the age of the Ariana Grandes and the Camila Cabellos out there, because those two women, like Ariana Grande and Camila Cabello, who are both in their early 20s, are definitely below 30 years of age, are so open about using extensions and using like, you know, fake ponytails and all that stuff. It doesn't seem to bother them as much just to be open about it. If we have these stars completely open about having helper hair, then why on earth should any of us be embarrassed to use it, to wear it, why not? People have, I've said this before, people have fake nails, they have fake hair. It's not a big deal at all. So 100% open yourself up to the possibility of it. A lot of people who try toppers and like wigs say, why didn't I just do this years ago? Why have I been suffering and struggling? And I could have had this perfect, beautiful head of hair. And if you don't think wigs look good and you're embarrassed, I suggest you have a look at my video, which I will link up about how where I show you an expensive wig that I own and a really inexpensive wig that I own. And the $38 wig that I own is the most beautiful hair. It is more beautiful than my hair has ever been. And it looks perfect. It looks great. You know, if if I wanted my hair to look good, I would 100% wear this wig. I don't care, and neither should you. We have these great tools, they're inexpensive. Just do not be shy to wear a wig. But one question that I saw was good was like, you know, if you're at work every day, how do you transition from wearing this hair, for instance, to a wig every day? It's gonna be like, isn't it gonna be so obvious? And so what I would suggest, you know, just my take on it, if you work somewhere that's a little bit more Fun. Like if you work in a very conservative office, maybe this is not the place for you. But if you work somewhere a little bit fun, maybe a way you can trans, and say you have really, really thin hair and everybody knows you have really, really thin, obviously, because you haven't been hiding it, let's just say. How can you approach it without looking like, oh, so-and-so just got a wig. 
First of all, people don't care that much. You care more about what most people won't even notice. How many of us have had the experience where we've gone through like a major haircut change and nobody noticed in our house, like our husbands didn't notice and our family didn't notice? And how many of us have done nothing to our hair and been like, and everyone's like, hey, did you cut your hair? And you're like, no, this, I looked like this yesterday. What are you talking about? People don't care that much, okay? That's my point. But if you're self-conscious about it, one way you could do about it is just, go, one way you could go about it is just wear something kind of funky. You know, buy an inexpensive kind of fun wig. Maybe buy a wig that's in lavender or a wig that's obviously got quite a bit of blonde in it and just go at it from a fun perspective. Like come in with some fun helper hair and wear that for a bit, wear that for a week and then just switch to maybe a more realistic hair that you wanna wear more long-term. You know, no one says you have to buy just one wig and wear only that. Like have a wardrobe of wigs. So many women do that. It's really not a big deal. And I feel like you're feeling self-conscious about it, but like people don't really care. They know you for you and what's inside. And so don't be afraid to wear toppers. Don't be afraid to wear a wig. There's so many, like YouTube is, you're here. You know how to use YouTube. There are so many great, you know, resources for how to make hair look more realistic, how to make cheap hair look good, how to, you know, change a wig into a topper. What is a topper? I don't have any videos on what is a topper, but I can guarantee you there are a ton of great ones out there. And so there's just so much great information out there. Don't suffer. Just <laughs> my message is don't suffer. You don't have to suffer. Find some sort of solution that works for you. I know you will. And so if you found this video enjoyable, I hope that you like, subscribe, do all the things, and I will keep making more of them. And thanks so much. I appreciate all of you so, so much. And I love getting your comments. So feel free to write me a note down below. Thanks everyone and have a great week. Bye.